The Government of India, Professor in the Department of Computer Science and Engineering, Indian Institute of Technology, Madras, Chief Architect of India's National Knowledge Network, NKN, and Chairs the Techno Technical Advisory Committee for National Optical Fiber Network. And recently, you were the chairman. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Sounds nice. Thank you, Dr. Sharma. The theme of this convention is campus to corporate and beyond. I would like to tell you a few things in the form of stories. And at the end of which, you must remember one line. Okay? <laughs> it's very common for you. Welcome, sir.
then share their views with all the boys and girls who are there in the campus. And uh, fortunately, CSI was started in Hyderabad. Hyderabad is the birthplace of CSI. And this year being the 50th year, we are celebrating the Golden Jubilee back at its birthplace. I thank the Hyderabad chapter. To give convention brief. And I, on behalf of CSI, JNITC, shortly known as JNITC, manager skills and actively professional contact through strong global academics. So let me tell you, today's program has been Raghavan Scientific Secretary in BMO on the theme of campus to corporate and at another distinguished academician, Dr. S.S. Mantha, chairman of JICTE, is also going to talk to us on this, the just no finish, and related aspects. Immediately after His Excellency's inaugural address, shortly, briefly, the sessions are as follows. We have got a, a session on our campus to corporate and beyond, Mr. Srinivas Rao, Vice President Vipro will be the chair along with three panelists. Then we have got the career opportunity at another session. And Mr. B. Srinivas Rao, CEO of BTNB, better today and better tomorrow, along with the schedule for today. Tomorrow, we have got the military section. And the Honorable Minister will be Sri K.T. Ramaragar, Minister for IT, Government of Telangana, will be the chief guest. I must also add, that yesterday and today we have chocolate program, program contest for students to develop very strong program for to develop cities into better cities. This is in short the program for today and tomorrow. Thank you very much. Sir. Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, I call upon Sri H.R. Mohan, President CSI, to give the welcome address. This is an annual convention which has recently held in Hyderabad, moves around the country and networks the members and students and the experts in the field of information and communication technology and provides an opportunity to stay correct. With a large network of chapters and student branches, we are proud to say that over 2,000 2, events are being held in a year across the country. The Education Directorate from the Chennai-based headquarters serves the academy and student community through faculty development programs, technical courses, webinars, digital library and knowledge portal, mini research projects, certification examinations, software talent tests, student contests, programming and projects. Thank you, sir. May I take the privilege of welcoming Dr. Harvinder Singh Saini, Managing Director, GNI, and Event Chair to address the convention. Honorable Governor of Andhra Pradesh and Telangana, Kiri Kesalmir Simhan, Professor S. V. Raghavan, Guest of Honor, Professor Kaisal Manta, Chairman of Bumanic Institutions, other dignitaries on the dais, of the dais, dear students from, who have come from all over the country, press and media personnel and other guests. Welcome to Bumanic Institutions again. Friends, this campus was started in year 2001. And we are in the 15th year now. And we are celebrating the Golden Jubilee of Computer Society of India. Since inception, we have worked hand in hand with Computer Society of India. And we have been blessed with the various seniors from CSI. First to mention here, Professor Ashoka Prabhav, Dr. DVR Winter, and many others who have been helping us. Thank you, sir. May I now request the SS Mantha, Chairman, all India Council for Technical Education and the guest of honor of this function to address the gathering.
His Excellency, Honorable Governor uh, Narasimhanji, and all the other dignitaries on the dais, Professor Raghavan, uh, all the invited uh, guests, the students. Uh, it's, it's an honor to be here <coughs> and talk to you on uh, the uh, corporate uh, uh, understanding that you need to have when you leave these portals and find something out in the outside world. Uh, and uh, my... <coughs> The uh, entire process of education goes through certain basic principles. It allows you to understand the life on a campus and when you go out into the corp. In political science and law, after completing his studies at the National Defence College in New Delhi, he joined the Indian Police Service. Shri ESO Narasimhan belongs to 1978 batch of IPS and Andhra Pradesh cadre. He served as a first secretary in the Moscow Embassy from 1981 to 1984. He is highly respected police official. Now, may I request our Honorable Governor to address the gathering. Thank you. Sardar T.S. Kohli, Chairman, GNI. Sardar G.S. Kohli, Vice Chairman. Dr. S.P. Raghavan, Scientific Secretary of the Prime Minister. Sri S.S. Manta, Chairman AICT. Sri H.R. Mohan, President CSI. Dr. Saini, Managing Director, GNI. <coughs> Distinguished members of the faculty. Gracious ladies, gentlemen, and my dear students. Well, today is a very important day for you students as you embark on your journey shortly after completion of your studies. You are now moving into a different world altogether and information technology has changed the global order completely and today it has reduced the world into a small village. That is the reach of information technology. Having chosen information technology, your next thing is to see how best are you going to benefit out of this. While you will certainly get picked up in a campus with very fairly fat salaries being in the IT industry, but there is also a certain societal responsibility that is cast upon you, members of the information technology fraternity. Well, you, many of you will go into the private sector, some of you will probably join the government sector, some of you will have your own business. Today, as you realize, technology is the driver to development. It is the main driving force to development. Everybody talks of development process and everybody is questioning why are we not moving as fast as we should be with information technology at our beck and call. Now it is for you students to see how you want to take up this challenge of using information technology to further our developmental process. When I talk of development process, it basically includes three parameters, namely the state of the economy or the economic strength. Today, ideology or just a military arsenal is no longer a test of your, a trial of your strength. It is your economic strength which matters today and your economic power is more important than your military power or any other power. So information technology has a very major contribution to sort of improve our economic viability. The second area is security. How does the economy improve unless the environment is secure? So many times when investors want to invest, the question that they pose is how secure is this environment for us to sort of sink in our capital? So, Information technology is a good turnaround for a secure environment. The third thing is the fashion statement that all of us hear these days, good governance. 
Do we accept what is a good governance? Do we have a definition of good governance? Or is it just a statement that we are all making? To me, as an ordinary man, good governance means the happiness quotient of the people at large. And what is the happiness quotient comprising of? It comprises of basic things like education, health, employment, infrastructure, and housing. So if you look at all these parameters, and all, all these put together, is what constitutes your development process. Now if you want to really put your development process in a fast track, you will have to see how you can use information technology to advantage in each of these sectors. If it talks of economic stealth, now take for example agriculture. We need large amount of food to sort of feed the teeming 1.2 billion people that we have. And with the food security now in place, the demand for food is only going to grow and not going to decrease. If food security is to be provided, which, which means our agriculture output has to be proportionally, has got to proportionally increase. But at the same time, if the economy has to move forward, it requires industrialization also. So industrialization means land, chunks of land are being taken away for industrialization. Chunks of land being taken away means reduction in the agricultural holding. With an Atlantic water supply, with poor energy systems, how exactly are, you, are we hoping to sort of improve our agricultural output? This is a challenge that I would like to pose to the technologists. How do we, ma how do we match industrial development with food security, adequate food security and growing demand? Energy. Energy is a very important component both for industrialization and for agriculture. How do we really provide this energy? We are not talking about power. When we talk of power, power sector, I mean, either right now we are, we are only looking at basically at thermal and hydrogen power. I mean, how long is the, are these two things going to last? Hydrogen power depends on your erratic monsoons. Sometimes it comes, sometimes it doesn't come. If you're looking at thermal supply, again, coal deposits will dwindle over the years. It is not going to be permanent. Why are we not able to move into solar technology? Solar power, I think, is available in abundance and we need to see how exactly we can move into solar power which can increase this. So there's a lot of contribution which you can use from the IT field to sort of group all these things. So also in the security environment, today cyber war is our biggest threat. No longer is war going to be fought on the ground between human beings. Nobody is willing to waste lives in a, in a major war. Today given the cyber terrorism or cyber security, you can sit in some far off place in the world and you can probably destroy systems. Because information technology having come in such a big way and so many students taking up to it, we realize that we are living in a wired world. Everything is wired. So if, if somebody wants to bring in, bring down your system, all that he has to do is to hack into your system. How far, how strong are our systems? How good are our firewalls for such delicate systems, sensitive systems? Because even our sensitive systems are wired. How good are our firewalls? Have we provided firewalls? Are we observing something called an IT discipline. Because the most important thing is the IT discipline. I think today what we lack is IT discipline. We, say we seem to be using the same type of computer both for internet purposes and, and for other restricted purposes also. As is that you are leaving doors open, you are leaving windows open for people to hack into a system. Do you realize the threat that cyber terrorism can